前はもう死んでいる Hi. You know all those college advice videos that seem to require insane work ethics? If you're like me, you'd realize that that sort of advice doesn't apply to us serotonin deficients. You might watch those productive college advice videos and feel good about yourself because you get to pretend like you're being productive while you're only sort of vicariously being a motivated person. But you're not actually gonna follow most of the advice they give. Cause let's be real, it's gonna be incredibly difficult for us to even get out of bed without a little bit of help. So here's some realistic college advice that you can use to sort of help the endangered species that are your brain cells. Now you may wonder, what kind of credentials does this guy have to possibly give advice about being productive? And <laughs> well, let me tell you. You see, I'm a rising sophomore at Stanford, which means I've survived an entire year of college, and it only took one day of school for me to have a total mental breakdown. <laughs> so here's some of my advice. Number one. Senioritis doesn't end in high school. In high school, people are on your ass all the time. But in college, you're not really forced to do anything. You don't have to attend classes, you don't have to study, your parents won't yell at you if you sleep in late, and you won't get in trouble for dueling in the bathroom because in college you can just step outside. I mean, really, you don't even have to be there. So if you had senioritis before, you'll probably still have it because like before, you don't really have to do anything. So my advice for trying to end senioritis before you have senioritis until you're literally a senior citizen is to find the reason to want to do things. Think about why you're at college. You're at college because you want to better yourself. Whether you want to learn things to get a nice career, or you just want to learn things that get you excited, or you just like studying. Basically, to end senioritis, you gotta know in your own head that what you're doing is what you want to be doing. Remember where you are. Now before you head off to college and you're all excited about all the fun new things that you're gonna do, remember what college is. College is not like the movies or the TV shows or even YouTube for that matter. It's just not that fun. There's probably a billion college day in the life videos and to be fair, they're all somewhat pretty much accurate in terms of what happens in each day, but where they fail is how long each of those segments feel. So you notice that in videos, the studying part of the day in the life is usually in a time lapse, which makes sense because if they were to accurately portray studying in a video, the video would be over four hours long. College isn't a video that you can scroll through and skip to the best parts. You actually have to sit through the boring parts as well. Before you head into college, you should realize that college is still a place for learning and everything that comes with it. So how do you get an unmotivated person to somehow trick themselves into being productive? The answer to that is routine. Think about it like this. No matter how lazy and unmotivated you are, there are still things in your day that you will pretty much do no matter what. For example, you wake up and you brush your teeth every morning. When you brush your teeth, you don't think about, oh, do I really want to brush my teeth? Do I need to do this? Do I want to do this? It's more like, oh yeah, it's nighttime and I'm going to bed, so I should brush my teeth. So the trick with going to class and studying every day is not so much thinking about it like a choice, but more like a routine. You should go to class simply because it's what you do in the mornings. You know what I'm saying? Remember supervised study back in high school or middle school where you have a set time to work on your homework? During that time, you're not really thinking, ah, do I need to do homework? Do I want to do homework? You just do homework because that's the set time set out to do homework. So plan out your college schedule a bit like that. A rhythm you can fall into and do without really having to think about why you're doing it. 
because it's much easier to go through the motions than to set the motions every single day. So what you want to do with your college schedule is set up a rigid routine that you can fall into without really thinking about it. My next piece of advice is pretty simple. Use substances, and by that I mean caffeine. Once I hit college, I made the revelation that what I lack in serotonin and motivation, I can almost substitute with caffeine. Because the thing is, the more energy you have, the more likely you're gonna actually do things. What I like to do personally is ingest so much caffeine that I feel like I have to do some work or, you know, do something with my mind and my body because otherwise I feel like I'm going to explode. So in general, if you drink coffee or tea or monster energy or whatever for every single day of college, as a whole, your energy and your motivation will be a little bit elevated and your health will only marginally decrease. So I'll leave that up to you. Now, of course, it's better to not actually try to multitask, but the truth is you're probably going to do it anyways. If you're like me, you're going to feel so incredibly miserable to study for hours on end. So what you'll probably end up doing is throw on some YouTube videos or a Netflix show as you're trying to study or bouncing between the two. So my advice for multitasking is put on a TV show that you already know really well. The problem with trying to watch new shows or new videos or listen to a new album or something is that you're going to feel the desire to actually pay attention to it. You actually have to pay attention to them to know what's going on. And because of that, you'll end up trying to split your attention between your work and your leisure, and you're not going to be able to get much done. So you should instead throw on a TV show that you enjoy, that you like, but you also know like the back of your hand. That way, it's sort of like background noise. You don't have to pay attention to it because you already know what's going to happen. So you can focus on your work, but you still feel like you're having fun. Now, something that was very important to me personally is to remember not to play the slacker Olympics. What I mean by that is don't not try because you think it's cool. Now in high school, it's sort of cute, sort of quirky, sort of relatable to procrastinate a lot. You'd go home, watch Netflix or play video games until midnight, and then cram very quickly before going to bed really late. And you'd go to school the next day and laugh with your friends about how all of you are incredibly unproductive and everyone has a laugh. Well, in college, you will have a rude awakening uh, that it's no longer funny or cute to be a sack of shit. So drop that from your mind right now. Now, if you still find it hard to find the motivation to work hard in college, then think about the money. If you're like me or most people, money is a good thing to have. You want money. So when you skip a class, you're effectively burning like a couple hundred dollars. Visualize that in your head. Imagine your wallet just burning up right in front of you. And hopefully, that'll get you out of bed. So in conclusion, if you're like me and find it hard to work hard naturally, if you had senioritis since you were 10 years old, if you leave yourself to your own vices, what's probably gonna happen is you're going to feel very bad about yourself. You're gonna feel like you're unproductive, but you're also going to struggle finding the motivation to be productive. So what you should do is leave external factors in your life that will help you get motivated. I don't know if any of that makes sense, but it sort of works for me, so there it is. I hope it helped. Bye.